I am Anubis. Anubis, thank you. I am Max. Thank you for coming. Greetings. I heard your name recently, so I thought that you might be around and um, that you might have some business on Earth now. I am here on Earth in several aspects. Can you elaborate? Yes. I've given an aspect of myself to seven different people so that uh -huh. they may shine their light better, do their mission stronger, and have greater understanding of this age that they live in. Thank you. So, um, can you tell about yourself? What's your mission on Earth and uh, what have you done so far? At this time, the aspects of myself are holding light, but they're also doing many things. The, there are grid lines to maintain. There are uh, informations to bring forth and to collect from the matrix of the universe. And so therefore, my aspects are working to inform the world of what is happening at this time, also to prepare the world for the future that is to come. So I've been attracted to our uh, world energy, uh, avian energy have been attracted to, has been attracted to me and I've been attracted to it. So what is special about the avian energy on Earth? these days? The avian energy on Earth is higher functioning because of its intellectual prowess. It can actually bring up the IQ of those that it enters and help them to understand uh, abstract concepts and things that, uh, that are not necessarily of this dimension. But this is necessary at this time so that you may understand the coming dimensions. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, are you, uh, in, in your life as Anubis, um, uh, were you a blue avian? I had the head of a dog. Oh. <laughs> But yes, I was a blue avian. Ah. The, uh, the Sphinx originally held my image. Aha. Uh -huh. And because it was destroyed, they created a new image for it. Wow. If you will look at the image of the Sphinx, you will see the base is much too large for the head that is there. Wow. I see. So, um, what was the purpose of, uh, of that Sphinx uh, sculpture? The Sphinx is a guardian. As I am a guardian of the underworld, as they said. But mm -hmm. I am actually just a guardian of the dimensional portholes that go uh -huh. from one place to another. I was uh -huh. in charge of maintaining them. And therefore, I got a very good reputation for moving one people from one place to another, especially those that they considered to be dying. I would send one of the, someone that was sick into the portal, and then they would be repaired on the other side. Oh, wow. I see. Makes sense. Uh, what, what dimensional transfers are those? Is it like third dimension to third dimension or is it third to fourth? Third to fourth, third to fifth. I see. Um, so, um, who, you, who were your parents? Some believe that Ra was my parents, but um, I was not actually born on this planet. Uh huh. My parents are not here on this world. I see. So what was your role in, in the 
uh, and in, in Egypt as a, as a physical being, what did you do? I, I was in charge of much of the technology that was there and in charge of maintaining it because I had a vast understanding of the technology of those days. I would replace the crystals and put things in uh, place. I illuminated the, the, the different ports in the pyramids because there was, it was necessary for light to be there. And they have discovered that at this point. Uh, I have, I also was in charge of transporting people from one place to another and uh, making sure that the communications and transportal systems were working properly. Uh, did you do it all by yourself or did you have a team of uh, technicians? I did have some technicians working with me, yes. What uh, races were this? Some of them were actually humans. Uh -huh. Because I would train them to do small different things. They were able to set up the lighting systems in the, in the pyramids because they were a small people and those shafts were very small. And so we could send them in there and show them how to set up the lighting systems or systems in there that were needed at the time uh, when I was there. Um, but you could uh, use drones, right? What? You could use drones if you needed to access somewhere. Oh, absolutely. Uh-huh. And by yourself, were you big? Yes, I was rather large. I was over six foot tall. Uh-huh. Was there any element of hum human body in you, or were you completely a bird? There was, was there a human in me? Uh, I mean, the, the images show a human with a bird head or with a dog head, but uh, w did you have any, of, any part of the human body, or did you, were you completely a bird? Of course. I was a blue avian, but we made the human body so that we would not be completely alien. But in order for the head uh, to be changed to human, it would not be able to carry as much information. So therefore, we left our heads to be of, of the normal size so that we could actually use them more properly. Now, in some cases, we did have a, form a human head and put a mask over it or put a... Uh, a uh, helmet over it so that we could control different things from that area. Right. So how was it to, to, wear, to wear a human body? How was it for you? Actually, I got accustomed to it. The blue avian body was a little bit less versatile. Huh. And so the human body was able to do things that the blue avian body was not. That was actually a plus. So blue avians don't have uh, hands? They, they do, but they are not as functional as the hands on a human. We, were grow we grew up as avians. Avians do not function the same way as humans do. And so for, therefore, when living as an avian, you do not need the use of hands as much as you do as when you are a human. Right, uh, so um, you would have only two legs, no, not hands, right, as, a, as an avian? Two legs is what we had before, yes. Uh -huh. But remember, the feet were very different. These feet of humans were actually much more balanced for their size. Mm -hmm. the, the blue avian feet uh, we did some flight, and so it wasn't necessary for us to use as much balance later in our evolutionary process because we d sat a lot and did not uh, use the legs as we originally did, which was clinging to things and uh -huh. 
now they start to form into a more human looking foot but they are still not evolved that much into the a foot so my question is much more simplistic so i'm just trying to count the limbs of the uh, blue avian not the pharaoh not the not the modified ones but but the original blue avian so our angels have hands feet yeah. and and um, and wings but blue avians don't have hands you just have feet and wings and that's about it right there is a, a the beginnings of hands yes we do have a two a grasping two finger kind of hand but it's not as uh, functional as your hands. Oh, so you have wings and hands and feet, but the, the hands are not as functional. That's what they're Cor saying. Correct. Wow. Uh-huh. I got it. Uh, sorry for going into biology, but um, one of the one of the Blue Evans was offended by me asking only biological questions, but I'm still asking. Uh, so, um, the Mammals have um, uh, red blood cells, erythrocytes. Uh, we don't have DNA in them, and birds do have DNA in the in the blood in the in the red cells. Um, why is that? And uh, is it the same for you? Does it make any you know? Is there any, like any deep meaning in, in that? For red blood cells. For red blood cells to contain DNA. So in birds, there is DNA there, and in humans, there yes. is not. Yes, that's to keep the DNA all over the body so that it can function mm -hmm. as it is supposed to. <coughs> as you know, there are many functions in the body that are second nature. Breathing, heartbeat, circulation, nerve, nerve processes, eye movement, uh, hearing. That all these things must be maintained. If the DNA was not throughout the entire body, it would not be able to have, the body would not have a fail safe uh, for its actions. It also works with the brain and sends information to the brain constantly so that the functions of everyday uh, normality, normal functions can be done without any thought process at all. I think we're onto some discovery here. So mammals lost their DNA in blood cells, and I be believe that DNA is very important for, for uh, information uh, processing, for thinking and uh, of for course. thinking and uh, uh, emotions. So um, by dropping the DNA from blood, mammals lost something, which you have and possibly lizards have, I'm not sure. So what is that, that we lost? What we lost was... No, no, we lost. We, uh, the mammals lost the DNA from blood cells, and you are the, the blue heaven, as I believe. You, you lost the ability of uh, several portions of the brain. So therefore, that's why you have limited access. Mm, I was talking about blood, blood DNA. In the blood, we have much less DNA. So say uh, bird DNA would have like thousand times more, bl the blood of the birds would have thousand times more DNA than of mammals. Yes. So your, your blood might be thinking and carrying the information around the body, which we don't have that. I see. I've never really studied the human body that much, but I would say that the loss of that DNA within the blood cells, you still do have it, don't you? We have white cells, but there is very few of them, and red cells don't have that, so we have a thousand times less DNA there. I see, but there still is DNA in the blood cells. In white, yes. Yes, I understand that. And it, you will have white blood cells all around the body to, uh, protect the body right so, and so that is what you have lost in the red blood cells with the dna is a more natural protection a greater immunity right i was thinking about more like uh, information processing imagine yes there is um, that too and that's what i was saying about the dna in our system it does uh -huh. help with functionality 
and keeps things moving much more quickly. Mm -hmm. Of course, you understand that birds have to move much more quickly than some other creatures. And most animals instinctively, when uh, brought into moments of fear, will move much more quickly than humans possibly could. Right. This is an effect of the DNA and the blood also, to some extent. It's a much, it's a much faster trigger. Uh, I will jump to the next question. Thank you. Um, the, uh, I did a past life regression, only one, and there I, was, I, I saw myself being a bird and having a family. And um, it was a very ru rural setting, so it was like a wooden house and uh, made out of logs and the floor was dirty and um, it was like a peasant life with lots of birdy children. Do you know what, what race was that? That could be a very early version of the blue avian, but I do not know. I would have to look at that past life regression. What color were you? Brown. Actually, that could have been us. We are, we are now blue, but we started off in different color stages. But I believe, actually, you were not a blue avian. I do not feel that from you. I feel uh -huh. that you are a Kalanda. A Kalanda is, they are still, they are still in the, uh, almost not quite as involved as the human race, but they are about three galaxies away. Uh-huh. And they, they are actually w as uh, advanced as your people were in the 1960s. Ah. Yeah, my life felt like uh, more like medieval centuries or even earlier. Yes, very mm. possible. The Calendra actually are very interesting. They have a little bit more mobility. Did you have hands in that, in that memory? I think so. Yes, they do have hands. And we did not. So you are, we're a Calendra. Hmm, interesting. Um, coming back to the uh, Egyptian history, so I, I'm reading Blavatsky and she suggested very strongly that uh, Egyptians came from India, that the original uh, settlement was in India, and then at some point, uh, if you remember Ramayana, there was a, uh, a history of Rama and Sita was stolen, and um, Hanuman uh, saved Sita and uh, 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 conquered and fought demons, uh, demons and uh, Help Rama to restore the uh, restore his family. So, so then um, Hanuman, she said, is likely to mo have moved to Egypt and settled there. Yes, that is true. If you will read the Sumerian tablets that have not been yet, uh, uh, well, they they have not been translated yet. There are some writings in India that has mo have not been translated. This will give that history. Did you meet Hanuman? Would you say? Did you meet personally, uh, did you meet Hanuman in person? No, I did not. Uh-huh. Um, do you know anything about uh, Jewish history in Egypt? It looks like before, uh, before the, um, before the event described in the uh, in Bible, there was still Jews in, in Egypt, which I think were called um, Has... Hasidic? No, some other name. I forgot the name. But, you know, they were, uh, they were uh, beer beards and uh, heads and uh, uh, honored only one God, so they were pretty much Jewish. Yes, they were not, uh, there was many different religions in the Egyptian culture, and that was allowed, actually, until a point where um, 
some of the Egyptians became gods, or some of those that have come from the sky were honored as gods. And then they became all powerful and they decided they should be worshiped. I was not one of those. Um, now, the, uh, there is a, a prophecy that uh, a Giza pyramid will still play a big part in, in ascension and there will be some uh, global yes. event which will be ignited. Um, yes, you are from by the events. Can you elaborate? Yes, let me tell you what that is. You see, the pyramid is not what it appears. It is not a burial place. It is a, a multifaceted uh, power storage area. It's a it, and it has many different uses. It was made. It was there to make. For some of the ships, it was there to, uh, for transportation, uh, teleportation, communication. It was there to bring. Um, you see the slanted different uh, areas that slant down into the pyramids. You see those, right? Those you could look up through those and uh -huh. see certain constellations from. From the inside of the pyramids, there was uh, there was the portholes that would send people to different areas of the uh, cosmos, and those were pointing directly toward those areas. A, a good guideline to keep things str straight and on track as we were uh, pushing out the energy. Also, under the pyramids, you will find there is a ship deep within uh, the ground. They are now try finding the tunnels that will lead to it, but it will take a long time for that ship is very deep. But the thing is, there was a lots of functions to the pyramids and making fuel was one of them. Being a power station was another and transportation and all these things were all part of it. Um, so what's the role of Sphinx? Uh, is there any anything under Sphinx which is uh, of, to be the, discovered? Yes, under one of the paws of the Sphinx, which is now there, you will find many transcripts that have been hidden and they will be uncovered at some point. There are three humans that are considered keys to opening the Sphinx. Now, the right time must come and if they, are if they are called to the Sphinx, they will all three show up there. It will be an overwhelming desire to get to the Sphinx. And the three of them will expose their portion of the code that will open the Sphinx. Underneath oh. the Sphinx, there is a ship as well. So it is uh, open through speaking or singing? It's open through the codes which are within three humans. Oh, they don't have to do anything. They just have to appear there. They have to, they will have to bring forth that code. And it will be in their mind when they get there. So do they have to speak it out or do they have to just to remember it? Yes. They know the order in which to speak. Oh, so it's a, it's a vocal unlocking. Yeah. Uh -huh. It is that they are all over, they are in three different locations around the world and there will okay. only be three if one should pass the code will pass to another person uh -huh. the three living humans must always have it and they always must be adults sounds wonderful um do you see it happening anytime soon we do not know when that time will come uh are there any conditions for that time to come yes there Can are. Name? Can you name some of them? Much of the world must be in, in a, a certain state of understanding. Uh -huh. Much of the world must be ready for what information is going to come forth. And uh -huh. the population must be diminished. 
How much? That I do not know. I see. Weird. Uh, so is it a necessary component for ascension or is it um, no. one of the options? This is not a, a component of your ascension. This is a component of uh, the return of for, and first contact and the arrivals of, of many. So why diminution of population is, is, a, is a factor and why is it a condition? It is not one of our conditions. It is just the fact that it has been predicted by the prophecies of the universe that when uh -huh. first contact uh, arrives for, and that the Sphinx is opened, the population of your planet will have been diminished. Wow. Weird. Perhaps some will have gone to other planets. Ah. I see. Or maybe some will ascend. I do not know the conditions of that, just what the prophecies say. Um, is there like a, a full text of the prophecy which you can read, or is it just uh, the meaning of it which can be translated? The meaning of it I have. I have the texts, but it is not to be read by two or by humans. You must read the emerald tablets to get the information that you need about the Sphinx. Wow. Uh, so are these physical emerald tablets or a copy of them? There is a copy of the emerald tablets, but they can be found on your YouTube. People read them, listen to them many times, and they will wow. bring forth esoteric knowledge. The knowledge that is contained within the emerald tablets also changes with the energy of the earth because they are meant to transmutate for each era of existence. Wow. Um, so meanwhile, is there anything we should be able to do with the bird energy, avian energy, and the story of, of, of uh, Egypt? Because it looks like that, that is far in the future. It does not seem as far in the future as you may think, but uh -huh. it is the future. So uh, I see that the activity of the avian energy and people who speak, uh, speak and bring the symbols can you comment anything about that? There are many symbols being brought to the earth at this time. Some are Pleiadian, some are Orion, some are from the past Egyptian worlds. Yes, there are symbols being brought here and being translated. If they are not being translated, then they are worthless. So we are hoping that all the symbols that come down through the matrixes and through other means and also discovered here on your world from past civilizations will be understood and read it i believe that now that 67 percent of your scientific population believes in aliens and ancient aliens there will be a change in the thought processes and how things are uncovered and looked and how things are looked at can you help us can you help us with translation by giving us some some words for now just a few words to start they are they already have what they need for translation oh. but i can give you one or two words okay the pronunciations are this ora ah that it means in the present time ora ah and Kita Mo is find your thought. Kita O. Wonderful. Can you give us some uh, uh, something uh, in your language? Maybe some blessing or some uh, parable or something else? I will give you a blessing in our language. Do you want it? Yes. 
One moment. Kriya o wa e ashan natyata utiparet shenzavota a wakwa ahati yata andavut sukavrat. Now, there is another part of that from the ancient blue avian language that sounds more like this. That would be the more avian sounding language. Thank you. Can you give a translation? In these days, when humans' eyes are being opened, illumination will come to them in strange but valuable ways. Wake up, and you will be part of a great new era of understanding beyond that which you can possibly imagine. Thank you. Uh, next question I had, let me see the timing, just a second. Okay, next question I had uh, was, um, uh, can you elaborate on the story or can you explain the story about uh, how Isis uh, recovered Osiris? How he recovered? How she recovered Osiris? Yeah, how Isis, she recovered Osiris, yeah. He was lost, did this, uh, this bundle, then she kind of recovered him piece by, by piece. Yes, they had destroyed him and cut him into pieces. Uh -huh. This was to stop information that he was going to give to humanity. They did not see that it was yet time for this to happen. And so she found that her brother had killed, uh, well, his brother had killed him. And this was a great tragedy to her because they were of a twin nature of some sort. We are still trying to understand exactly what that meant. Some believe it was a twin flame, but we believe it was twin energy sources from different areas of uh, a particular nebula. However, information is fleeting from that time. But she found him and put him into a reassembler, uh, a healing machine. But it was not on this planet. Uh -huh. It was on another world. And so she gathered him up, put him in a transporter, transported themselves to the other place, and put him back together. Uh-huh. So uh, mm -hmm. he was not the same, of course, as the original Hermes, but he was uh, he was adequate. Originally, it was Osiris. Is Osiris and Hermes the same thing? Pardon? Uh, I was talking about Osiris, and now you yes. mentioned Hermes. What yes, is it Hermes is the one that killed him. I'm sorry. Oh, gosh. Hermes killed Osiris, yes. Hermes Trismagistus. Yes. Wow. So therefore, there was a lot of plotting. And also, with Osiris destroyed, Isis, her energy was only, uh, was very much diminished. And this is another reason why she needed him to be restored. She was diminished in energy because he was part of her energy. We are not still understanding all of that. There are many stories and many uh, different theories on why that is, but none of them seems to hit on the exact truth. We would have to go to their original area of existence, which is a nebula far away and not in Orion or in Octorian or Osiris or Syria or any of the, I mean, 
Orion or Syrian space as people would assume. Mm -hmm. So this is something uh, from a closed society. And this is something, a new information for you. Uh-huh. Thank you. So you weren't part of that story. You came later? I was not really part of that, no. That was happening without my knowledge or understanding. So I think there were four Egyptian kingdoms. Uh, which of those uh, did you live in? I lived in a few of them. In fact, I have visited all of them. Uh-huh. And that happened, uh, and um, Isis' story happened before that, right? Correct. Was it happening on Earth or elsewhere? Yes, it was partially happening on Earth. That is how you have some of the information. Of mm -hmm. course, not all the information is here, but uh -huh. what people saw and what was told is only part of the story. So the destruction of Atlantis uh, replaced about 50,000 uh, 50, years ago. There are many different offerings of what time uh, Atlantis existed, but it was an amazing place. And it was completely destroyed, except for the island of Crete. The island of Crete is the last remaining portion of Atlantis. Uh -huh. That portion stretched around through the middle, had a, a very thin uh, peninsula that reached all the way into the Mediterranean to the island of Crete. But it was a large continent outside of, of Portugal. And, and of, of course, much farther north. But Portugal was its closest land area in the Atlantic. Of course, it was close to many things with the peninsula in the Mediterranean. But when they did their most of their greatest trading, it was from uh, the P Portugal area and through the, also through the Egyptian area. Thank you. Uh, so, um, okay, uh, Bashar mentioned the, the, the time about 23,000 years ago, the last destruction of Atlantis. So, I think that is closer, but I do not know the exact dates. So, the um, ISIS history, uh, ISIS story would be after the destruction of Atlantis and before the Egyptian kingdoms? Correct. So, um, there, actually, it would be after the destruction of Atlantis, but not before the kingdom started. They would be part of the kingdom, the very first one, I believe. I yes. see. I see. And um, now, your, your activity, was it only in Egypt or was it on other places and other cultures as well? I visited many places. What you call Machu Picchu. There are places in the Mayan culture, the Incan culture, the Mexican Tea, Tea culture. I have visited many places, including Stonehenge. Because you're a technologist, you possibly can explain a bit more about Stonehenge. Stonehenge is a very unique. Uh, area because you will find that it Stonehenge is only a very small part of that uh, historical area. It was very large. There are what they called. Uh, there is a subterranean large row of uh, stones underneath the ground that they have now found uh, called uh -huh. Superhenge. They are called Superhenge, and it is in a circle. And uh -huh. it, it, they believe that Stonehenge, uh, well, I know that Stonehenge is only a part of what, what is there. And most of Stonehenge's history is subterranean. So it what is, is it? Go ahead. It is, it can be used as a terraform machine. 
Um, what is the po not? It is not active at this time. So when, at the time when Egyptian um, pyramids will be activated, what would the Stonehenge hedge be involved in that technology as well, or are they independent? There are different technology, but they do the same similar things. They are pointing to the Orion and Syrian areas of the sky because they are from the same places. They just do something completely different from what the pyramids and, and the Sphinx did. They are a different kind of technology. So Giza pyramid is, um was pointing at the right places, but because of the um, imprecision of, uh, because of the moving of the Earth now of the orbit and the position, now they, it's not pointing in the right places. Would it be still functional? It, it will be still functional. We have higher technology at this point. It will be, it will have to be uh, changed in some ways the ports that are heading out of the pyramids will have to be pointed in a different direction because they no longer point to those parts of the sky that they once did um so who built it and when did they build it the, the, orions, the orions and syrians and many different uh species that were in in an alliance together, a federation, if you will, were together building these different things on your planets. Um, was it uh, in Egyptian time or before the destruction of Atlantis? Can you it place was it? Many, we visited your planet many times and early, very early, before Stonehenge before Atlantis. We were there. And the uh, Giza Pyramid, was it there then? No, we made that later. Uh, so was it after, after the destruction of Atlantis 23,000 years ago? It, it was, yes. So Atlanteans didn't have it yet? They did not have uh, the pyramids, no. They right. did, uh, it, it did overlap a little bit. At the end of the Atlantean era, the, the, the pyramids were created. Ah. There was an overlap, yes. So we could roughly estimate it's like 20, 30,000 years ago? I would say closer to 20,000. I see. Thank you. Um, and what about Stonehenge? That was more like 25,000. And who was building it? We were, some of our, the people from our alliance had a different idea for what that was going to be used for. Um, my time runs out, but I have a last question about Russia. Do you have any comments on Russian mission? Russian missions? Russian mission uh, in uh, coming century or something. I do not know what you are speaking of. Uh, I mean, every every race has uh, has its own mission and uh, of its own value. So, can you elaborate on what's uh, what is uh, what do you see Russia would be doing in the future? And, yeah, in the future, um, they will be doing what what the rest of the world is doing. They will be rebuilding uh, uh, their financial establishments and changing their ways but the future of the your world is tentative it is not guaranteed many think that it is i do not believe that is true there are some earlier prophecies that see that it could have a demise but some of the later prophets say that it will not so I'm hoping that it will not, but I do not know exactly what each country will be doing. That was a, um, I don't remember who did it, but I think uh, Bashar was mentioning this and also maybe Blavatsky, that each, each country, each, each continent, each race brings some 
some new no, a new lesson to the oh this is true um it is true that each area of your planet was put there for a reason now they are not divided the same way as they were in the past so therefore the russian area as you call it may be a portion of a very ancient uh past and meaning that I am not aware of. Uh-huh. I see. I must uh, go. Yes. Um, would, you, would you like to give a blessing at the end? Very well. One moment. Nakara o vyachan a erashuya anetya udya da priyatu ukwatan be well thank you very much it was a uh, an, an honor and a pleasure to to meet you as well. Hello? Hey, Jim, welcome back. Hey.